Welcome to Illo Talk. I am Corey Kerr, and this is day 83 of 100 Days of Animation, where I spend a minimum of 30 minutes every day working on learning to animate and finishing my short film. Um, you can check out the rest of this. There's like a whole playlist and whatnot. And tonight I want to talk about um, getting kind of a habitual rhythm. First, intro music. So a lot of people look at what artists, um, people who have passion project musicians, um, what they do in their free time and they wonder or will ask, like, how can you do that? And it's gotten to the point now where I have to, um, not because I'm being forced to or whatever, but because I start to get a a little anxious, a little itchy if I haven't worked on something in a while, if I haven't produced something, if I've gone a day or two without uh, moving a project forward. And I think that there's something called habitual rhythm. And, uh, and, and I'm kind of experiencing that right now because I went to Disneyland, LA for a week, hung out with some family, um, you know, brought my girls to... Uh, different things had had a fair fairly interesting experience on a motorcycle over a couple of days and uh, and this week it's been a little bit difficult to get back into the swing of producing these videos I've still been working on stuff um, but I kind of got out of the habit of a of a daily video I missed I missed a day and I had to combine a day with another day um, but it, but it got me thinking about this habitual rhythm. And what I mean by habitual rhythm is um, there's a certain cadence, a certain rhythm, a certain um, flow to uh, the habits that we use to create what goes on in our life. Um, for example, when you are in the shower and you are washing yourself and then you get out and you dry yourself, those are activities that you do so frequently and so um, habitually that you don't need to like think through each process. You don't need to say, I've washed my left armpit and now it's time to wash my right armpit. Now, what do I need to do next? Right? You have an order, especially the way that you dry yourself off. Like, and if you want to test this theory, here's a, here's a challenge for you. If you want to test this theory, um, dry yourself off in a different order. If you start with your shoulders or your hair or something, start with your legs and watch what happens. You'll miss huge spots because you have trained yourself uh, through habit, through years of daily practice um, to just automatically do these things, right? And there's a certain, um, there's a certain series of triggers that our body goes through, um, you know, when you can look at like Pavlov's dog and whatever, where... There was the scientist and he took a dog and he rang a bell and then fed him food and rang a bell and fed him food and rang a bell and fed him food and rang a bell and fed him food. And then all of a sudden he rang a bell and he tested that even though he had removed the food, the dog had begun to salivate because the bell rung, not because the food was there, because he began to associate like these things happen in this sequence or when this type of thing happens or whatever, right? And so as you start looking throughout your day, you'll see a series of triggers. Um, Kevin Cross recently was talking about, he did a 30-day Spartan challenge where um, he was, he was going super hardcore and uh, gave up a lot of things and added a lot of things and lost a, an impressive amount of weight and is getting in serious shape. But one of the things about that experience um, that I thought was really interesting was he pointed out that um, he walked by a bar. He wasn't going to that bar, but one of the things that he cut out was alcohol. And he walked by a bar and he immediately started wanting a drink, started wanting to have that experience, right? The sights and smells and sensations that surrounded that environment triggered behavior, right? It triggered the impulse to do certain things. Um, and so I, I, I have a point, I promise. Um, these are things that you can teach yourself, right? And so if you are 
uh, if you know any high school wrestlers or if you were a high school wrestler or, or any athlete really, um, what, what they do a lot of the times uh, in that type of conditioning and training is they are teaching the, the muscles of the body to bypass, bypass the thought process and the decision-making process and make it automatic. And so um, they train, you know, when, when this happens, you do this. When this happens, you do this. When this happens, you do this. You do this so frequently um, that they can wrestle in lightning fast reaction times because they're not deciding they're not processing that information um you know in the part of your brain that uses logic it's the the lizard part of your brain the lizard brain that is often called that's that's an automatic response it's a it's an instinctual thing and so um you know wrestlers that train you know long and hard um when they get into situations where they are wrestling um it becomes somewhat though not completely an automatic and instinctual response and series of moves that have happened because they've gone through and they've rang that bell right and so you can do this with your life right i wasn't always someone who spent their evenings and weekends working on side projects that wasn't i wasn't born doing that i didn't do that as a kid um, those of you that have watched a lot of my older videos will know that i came to art uh, pretty late in life, in, in my early to mid-30s. And um, I have come to the point now, though, where if if a night goes by and I haven't, I haven't created something, uh, I feel empty. There's a part of me that's missing. Um, and I know that sounds super weird to those of you that haven't gotten into this habitual rhythm. It sounds almost cheesy saying it out loud. But um, this, this activity of creation has become a part of who I am. Um, it's, it's a part of the things that I need to do to be able to, to do that. I remember one time, um, I was on a trip with a, a, f a faculty trip with several of my colleagues and there was some downtime, right? And we were, uh, we were in Silicon Valley and, uh, one of the people that was hosting us has this amazing house that overlooks the valley. It's incredible, right? And uh, there's some kind of downtime between the tour and whatever else we were doing. And I always have my sketchbook with me. And so just this incredible view, right? Um, and so I just got out and I just, I just started drawing. Um, and someone in the group who, who teaches writing, he looked at me and he said, uh, man, I wish I had that. I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, I wish I had that just drive to need to draw or write all the time you know i i you know it's just impressive that some people have that and some people don't you know and uh and i talked to him later and i said you know you mentioned to me that you mentioned to me that you wish you had you know kind of that drive and i said i don't that didn't come naturally uh that came because i have spent a considerable amount of time doing that this is this is what my response is to sitting down and not doing anything for a little while is to is to start creating something um but that's not that's not a natural personality trait that i have that's not innate or inborn or uh you know something that some people have or other people don't um i i've done that enough hours now to where i've trained myself to do that that's the bell that rings and uh anyway i I thought that was interesting. And so, so this habitual rhythm, right? Um, you can train yourself to do stuff for good or bad, right? Um, I remember the first time I came into contact with this theory, this concept, um, I was in high school and I was in this kind of psychology class and the teacher said, and she was very open, kind of a funny teacher. I really like her. And she was saying that she goes on runs and when she goes on runs, um, you know, by the, at the end of her run, she has to poop, right? Like, I don't run, but apparently this is a common thing. And she moved. She she sold her house and she moved to a different house, but her old house that she sold was like on her route, right? And so she was like running by her house and her body automatically like, you know, said, oh, this is familiar environment, you know, it's time for me to get ready to poop, right? <laughs> and so And so she had to retrain herself like, no, 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 no. Kind of clench up a little bit and keep running. Um, you know, this isn't where we do this now. 
And after after a couple of weeks, um, her body began to realize, okay, uh, it's not here anymore. It's over here, right? And so, so with that, there are, uh, I, I think dedicated space is important. I think having a studio is important. And, uh, and not everybody can have a studio where they have a room dedicated to, uh, you know, to art or creation or whatever. Um, but you don't need that. Um, but, but I do think you need a, you know, a space where you do this all the time. And that's what you do in that space. Um, I don't play video games in this room. I, I don't do anything in this room other than make things. This is, when I come into this room, my brain knows, oh, it's time to sit down and it's time to make things, right? Um, and so dedicated spaces, I think, is important. But I want to talk about dedicated space for a minute. So you can go and you can, you can have, dedicate any, any, any space to an activity. Um, a couple years ago, I, uh, I, I said, okay, honey, I need, I need a studio. Where, where's my studio going to be? And, uh, and we were, we were renting an apartment and it was small and, um, you know, we have a daughter and so there wasn't a ton of space. And so we, my poor wife, we moved the bed, we moved the bed over about two or three feet. So there was just enough room for her to get on her side of the bed. And on my side of the room, I set up my drawing table. Um, and I had to kind of like walk around it to get in and out of bed. Um, but I mean, there was a spot in our bedroom that that's what that was for. Um, we moved to another apartment after that and, um, decided that in the living room was, was a good spot. And so there was the entire living room. And then I had my computer desk and I had my drawing table kind of off in the corner and it was kind of set up in a way that it was kind of partitioned. There's some lines of demarcation to where I crossed that line and I was in, I was in kind of creation territory, right? Dedicated space. I think dedicated space is important. I'm not good at dedicated time as far as, uh, I've heard a lot of artists say, um, you know, that, that every day at this time I hit the board and, uh, and that, I, I feel like that could be really helpful. For me, um, it's not so much a time of day as it is a series of events. And so um, I know that I'm gonna hit the I'm gonna hit the board. I'm gonna either hit the, the Cintiq or the or the boards um, a few minutes after my daughter goes to bed. So we have a routine. We're gonna come home, I'm gonna hang out with the family for a couple hours, we're gonna eat dinner together. Um, you know, then we, uh, and, we, and then we say prayers and I read her a story. Usually it's Harry Potter for the last little while and, uh, you know, tuck her in, hang out with my wife for a couple minutes. And then we go downstairs and, uh, it's, it's, it's creation time. Right. And so, um, one of the things that has made that successful for me in my relationship, um, with my wife is that. I can do this while the TV is on. I can do this while I'm talking. I can do this while, um, you know, while listening to stories um, or whatever. And so um, we share that time and that space together um, while I'm doing this. So, so I'm not secluding myself somewhere off. Um, and, and, I, and I've built a series of practices. My wife is, has joined me in building a series of practices that allows me to both spend time with my family and with my wife and allows me time to be able to do this, right? So anyway, it has become, it's become habit. And, uh, and I really enjoyed my vacation. It was really fun, but at the same time, there was no dedicated space in the hotel room. There was no um, time that I had. I mean, we were going all day, every day. Uh, to be able to do anything. And I loved it. I loved having that time with my family, but I also just missed that itch of, of making something um, and creating something. So I, I did kind of steal away a couple minutes um, and try to sketch a little bit. And, and uh, it was kind of forced, um, but, but I'm back. But now that I'm back, I've been doing the, you know, spending the evenings creating, drawing, mostly uh, doing illustrations and whatnot. Um, sometimes promoting my, my website or store. Uh, I've spent a lot of time this week in the evenings getting a new store ready to go um, where I'm selling t-shirts and stickers and hoodies and tank tops and art prints and things like that. Um, and, and I'll announce that when it's ready, but it's, it's 
much better than the last one that I had, uh, which which was okay, but it was I like these guys a lot better. Um, anyway, I'm just getting down to you know the last couple of days where I've been getting back into the animatic and making things move again, and it, it just feels good to get back into that rhythm and get back into that groove. So if you haven't done this yet, or if you uh, are one of those people that wants to or claims to want to, um, I wish I could get the, I wish I had the time. I wish I did this. I wish I, you know, I wish I had the drive that you did or, or one that drives a lot of people nuts is people that say, oh, I wish I was that motivated. Well, motivation follows work. Motivation does not precede work. Emotion precedes work occasionally and an idea precedes work occasionally, but motivation never precedes work. Motivation is a result of work. Motivation comes because of this habitual rhythm. And so that motivation that is now driving me is a perpetuating thing, right? And it could go away. Um, I was, uh, Kemble, um, I was watching one of his videos and he was saying, he's saying when you miss a day of art, you start to freak out like, oh no, maybe I'll never draw again. And that's totally a thing, right? Um, it, it's a real fear uh, that, that happens. And I think that's part of this motivation. But but motivation follows, motivation follows work. And what I mean by that is people are not, people don't work hard because they're motivated. They're motivated because they work hard, right? I decide I'm going to do this thing. I do that thing and it becomes part of who I am. It becomes a habitual rhythm that I have in my day, in my week or whatever. I know that in this place and at this time and in this environment and this series of circumstances that this is what I'm doing. That is where the motivation comes and the motivation drives you to that point. Um, so I guess my challenge is if you haven't already and you want to, don't wait for the motivation, right? If you have a passion project that you want to start, if you have a side project that you want to do, if you want to, have, if you have a side hustle that you want to get get going, get involved in, you want to get involved in illustration, or you want to make a comic book, or you want to write a novel, or you want to do a short film, or um, you want to start writing short stories or get into poetry or, um, you know, any number of things. You want to start getting into sculpture or paper mache or learn the piano or whatever. If you wait for the motivation, you will never act because the motivation will never get you there, right? The motivation is a fleeting thing. But I'll tell you what you can do is start and start and do something every day. And every day you do a little bit and you'll find that sometimes that little bit turns into turns into a lot and sometimes you've just got to squeeze it in and sometimes you can't get it done every day, but you, you show up for hours every week, whether that's two hours or 20 hours, um, hours every week and it will become a part of your life. You will find that you miss it when it's not there and that is where the motivation comes. And if you can do that, then You've got uh, you've got the sustainability and the perpetuating, um, you know, uh, problem of being an artist, being a creator, uh, you know, of being driven to do these things. So anyway, just something I was thinking about as I was kind of getting back into the rhythm and get back into the swing of things and get back into my daily habits of, of the different things I'm doing with with work and family and, and, and side projects. Um, anyway, just just something to think about. And what you saw a little bit of on the screen while I was talking about that is just some more sketching that I'm doing in Photoshop to lay out some of the assets that I need. Uh, I'm not showing everything that I'm doing right now because I don't want to give away plot points, but there's some of that there. So you have something to look at other than my ugly mug while I'm talking. And as always, you can catch my stuff at CoreyKerr.com. Soon I will launch a brand new store. So if you are interested in... Uh, commemorating the time that we've spent together with a t-shirt or a hoodie or a mug or a art print or something along those lines uh, you can you can jump onto that store um, there's 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 a functioning store right now but but in a day or two I'm gonna launch a, a really good one and um, anyway I like it a lot it's good stuff functions well it's a nice site so yeah so there's that so you can check out coreycurr.com you can check me out on Twitter at Corey Kerr. Instagram at Corey R. Kerr, and of course here on YouTube. And like this video, hit that little thumbs up, leave me a comment. Uh, I'm curious if you guys can identify your kind of Pavlov response. Um, you know, what do you do every day 
um, you know, that you start to recognize what those are. I'm, I just like to hear those kind of stories. So let me know in the comments what your Pavlov response. And I'd really like to know if there's a particular um, creative practice that you found that uh, that drives you and, and, and is useful. Um, so yeah, so let me know in the comments. And if you haven't already, subscribe and turn the alerts on in the channel so that you know when I upload new videos. And I will catch you guys later. I'm out. <laughs> Let's <laughs> go.